Welcome back, guys, to another roundtable. My name is Adam Victor with Hi, me, Rosemary. Hello, hello. You're the fifth person joining us on this roundtable, and today we're going to talk about whether there is a stock market opportunity in China right now, China slash Hong Kong. So, I mean, a lot of things have been happening. I think there's a lot of news that's been going around. But、um, if you guys are not clued in yet, maybe just give a bit of context about what's happening. So, what's happening in the China slash Hong Kong stock market at this point yeah, in time? So, it's an exciting time, and I look at the Hang Seng Tech ETF, which actually constitutes the thirty largest、uh, tech stocks in China, like Meituan, Baba, Tencent, Sunny Optical, Kuaishou, and all the all the rest of the tech stocks. Okay, so if you look at the index itself, I think the performance、uh, over the last、uh, six months or five months,、uh, the index actually have dropped about close to. Forty over percent. That's a lot. At the time of this、uh, recording,、mm-hmm. and this is actually a lot worse as compared to what we have seen、uh, last year during the COVID sell down. Okay, so last year COVID sell down,、uh, the top peak to the bottom is actually down about twenty over percent. Okay, so I think things are pretty much、uh, intense right now, and、uh, mainly because of the regulations,、uh, news that we have been、uh, hearing, we have been reading all over the you know the media, right?、Mm-hmm. So yeah. So I mean, that's a pretty big thing. I mean, COVID was a huge thing that affected the whole world. Yeah. But that only, I mean, the, the Chinese or Hong Kong stock market only dropped twenty twenty percent. And this、yeah. this time around, it the like the regulatory crackdowns have caused the market to fall forty percent. Yeah. That's a big big one. So I mean, what's happening? So what is what's with all these like regulatory crackdowns? What's so Big about it that's you know, causing the market to drop so much. What's happening there? Yeah, so basically, is the series of、uh, regulatory intervention by the government in China, right? So we we can all remember the first、uh, intervention came in when the Ang Group IPO. So、mm-hmm. that was the first one. It didn't IPO in the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, because it was they were being slapped by the yeah. government, right? Yeah. And after after that case, then it came with the anti monopoly. Right, where all those big tech giants have been fined, and、mm-hmm. they are not supposed to have monopolistic uh practice, exclusive that, agreement, and yeah, all that. Yeah,、mm-hmm. and of course the recent one is the TT, right, where the government told them, right, to wait for the investigation before they go IPO, and they just force their way through、yeah. into the U.S. market. Then China start to block the merger for for Tencent between the Douyi and Huya.、Mm-hmm. Then followed by recently they crack down on the. Uh, music rights because Tencent owns I think eighty percent of the music rights exclusive in China, so they crack them down, say that you cannot have exclusive rights. Then followed by the tutoring crackdown,、mm. right? Because all these tutor are charging very very high fee, which cause a lot of uh, uh, affordability in China and also a lot of stress in China because a lot of the par- Asian parents are focusing a lot on getting their kids. Uh, to study as early as you know, two three years old, you know they start、oh, wow. studying, you know, <laughs> going to、so、childcare and school, you know. <laughs> as a then, parent, I can understand. Yeah, <laughs> well, he's the target parent here. Yeah. <laughs> then after that, you have your ten cent. Uh, recently, I think one or two days ago, they actually suspend new new user regi- registration. Okay. Right. Uh, that because of the they need to, uh, abide with the security compliances, right. Then of course, why the major uh shares have been. Uh, tanking right now is because of course,、uh, due to a lot of the fund managers are also dumping the Chinese stocks, especially like、uh, Katie Woods. Mm-hmm. One, the currently the most famous fund manager, she's dumping all the Chinese stocks. And finally, of course,、uh, I think the news yesterday or what、uh, China said that they're going to continue to launch six months intensive right in、uh, investigation in all those、uh, practices. Right, so this is going to be a six month thing. Yeah, right, that caused、wow. the market、yeah. to panic and sell down. And one more thing, ah,、uh, just recently, May Tuan, ah,、uh, share price dropped by more than fourteen percent, ah, after the new crackdown on them. Okay, and basically the Chinese government is telling them that you know they need to treat their ah、uh, you know riders ah、uh, as an employee, give them benefits,、mm-hmm. you know, and stuff like that. So the cost is probably going to go up for May Tuan, and because of that, I think price、mm-hmm. dropped. So is they you actually seen a lot of、uh, bad news in the market. That's the reason why I think. The share price of、yeah. all the tech company in China just start to come down. Okay, so if you look at、uh, ten cents drop by forty one percent, and then Alibaba drop by thirty one percent, and Meituan also drop by more than fifty percent. And of course, other companies, tech companies, actually have dropped easily thirty, forty, fifty percent. Right, and the edu tech companies, I think, have dropped. But as of today,、uh, more than ninety one percent. Wow, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> okay, I think that's almost gone already, man. <laughs> almost gone. <laughs> yeah, because、uh, what happened with edu tech companies is.、Uh, The Chinese government basically tell them that you know you have to become a non-profit company.、So、yeah, <laughs> you can't make money. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So there's basically a very big risk on this. If that if that do if that regulation were to go through,、mm-hmm. they literally wipe out everything. 
on the for that those yeah. private companies, right? I think more or less it's likely going to go through because yeah. uh, you just look at the market reaction is pretty much like, hey, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And they already start to ban all those uh, weekend tu- tuitions. They also ban yeah. uh, kids, from, I think six years old and below to have to have any yeah. tuition or something, mm. right? Tuition, and also yeah. during your vacation, cannot have tuition. Well, I mean, right. I, think a, I think that's a good thing for kids, but yeah. it's just really interesting to see how the Chinese government is really kind of like social yeah. Yeah. engineering yeah. the whole thing that you can't do this, you can't yeah. do that. It's, yeah. And it's just affecting the the business, I mean, the, the market as well. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. So for the all this tutoring company, I think is because uh, even if they didn't really go through to become non-profit, right, the price of the way they're going to charge a tutoring right fee, right, is going to be regulated. Okay. So you can expect lower revenue and profit in the near future. So definitely they are they are being literally white baby. Yeah. So yeah, so it's kind of like scary, right? We have so yeah. many news in the market that yeah. are all pointing to the same direction. Yeah. The market will tumble yeah. and stuff, right? So it's very scary, especially mm-hmm. those people who have share in China tech. I think that by now they're probably down by 20, 30% if they bought it this year. Yeah, yeah. but of course, like like I said, you know, this tutoring thing is the really, really bad news, right? But not everyone is like them, yeah. right? Even even this, right? So there's like cases like maybe, uh, can you want to talk about Alibaba and, uh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, for for Alibaba, I mean, Alibaba is basically more of it started out with N Group, right? They they're supposed to lease, and of course, Jack Ma came out and he just talked about you know how the government is stifling innovation in China, and then because of that, I think the big boss of China actually came out to halt <laughs> <laughs> to halt the IPO mm-hmm. himself, lah. So I mean, yeah. he got the honors of that. So I mean, like then then after that, uh, from then on, they went to in- investigate. Um, Alibaba basically uh, of the exclusive uh, agreements that they have with the merchants and because of, as a result of that they got fined about 18 billion um, uh, RMB <laughs> which is about uh, 28 billion um, 2.8 billion, sorry, 20, yeah. 2.8 billion US dollars. So it's kind of amazing the speed of, you know, crackdown is so fast in China. It took them, I think, four to five months to crack down N Group and now N Group is they survive, right? But yeah. they are at a much lower valuation as compared to their uh, yeah. pre-IPO kind of uh, level. But as compared to US, I think a lot of US tech, uh, if you uh, FTC trying to uh, charge them for antitrust issue, usually it will drag years, right? So I think in China, they are pretty much uh, very efficient in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah, I think, it's, I mean, it's not just one thing. So I think, Victor, you pointed out the entire timeline. It's been going on for, I think, at least a year, almost, yep. since the N Group. Um, you know, since the, late of last year. So yeah. it's almost like more than half a year. Half a year, yeah. okay. So it's like a whole series of things that it really looks like the Chinese government is coming in. They want to set regulations to how business in China can operate yep. because they don't want mon- monopolistic companies and stuff yep. like that. But at the speed of the, the crackdown is really fast. Because like you say, I think, I remember Microsoft's uh, antitrust thing took about 10 years to settle <laughs> in the okay. US yeah. in the courts and everything it takes a long time but China moves at a super fast speed yeah. and the main reason also because they're different in terms of culture right yeah. I think if you look at the US if some antitrust is issued on certain big tech company the big tech company will say will challenge them right and yeah. then they go to the yeah. car they drag ding dong here I mean you can there. see with the kids right I mean yeah. if, a, if a western kid is yeah. negotiating with the parent the, yeah, so the yeah, Asian so kid is like okay sure, 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 yeah. sorry. so I think <laughs> you mean if you go and read all those western side social media you can see that there's a lot yeah. of fear in uh, the you know uh, in the Chinese stocks because of the government yeah. keep interve- intervening, intervening into yeah. all this uh, regulation and all this, right? Mm. Uh, but my take is that because Western side, they, they don't understand the Asian culture, right? Like we talk about the parents and the kids, right? Like Western kids, you negotiate. Asian mm. kids, okay, you, you, a yeah, you can <laughs> you go, get out of the boundary, I just can you, yeah. right? <laughs> and you just go back, okay? So in, in you have to really understand how Asian works, right? Asian works on rules, you know? Okay. If you play within the rules, right? You're, you're safe, okay. right? Yeah. So right now, all these Chinese companies, right, they are going back to playing the rules because they, I think the past few months, they probably is testing their parents. Mm-hmm. Then the parents say, uh, came them and say that, get back to your rule, you know? Mm. And now they're all going back, right? right. Of course, yeah. the, 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 the most naughty kid is the education company. That's why they're going to get the worst hit, right? I think the naughtiest case. person in the room is probably uh, Jack Ma, right? He went to criticize <laughs> the yeah. regulator and yeah. that started the whole series of Yeah, he was like the older kid that yeah. voiced out against the parent that rebelled first. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, okay, pow. Yeah. And then the, the rest of the smaller ones came yeah. along. And, yeah. <laughs> and we no longer hear from him anymore. Anyway. Yeah, but of course we, we, must, we must all agree, you know, like all, all Asian parents, no one want to kill their own kids, right? So, so, yeah. so they just wanted to go back to the rule, that's all. Right? Yeah. So 
I think in China to succeed, they probably have to you know um, bow, bow down to uh, CCP, right? All right. China Communist okay. Party. Yeah. So I mean, let's not go. Uh, I mean, let's not go into that too much. I mean, yeah. there's a different. There are different ways <laughs> that different cultures will operate, yeah. different yeah. countries, and all that. Uh, but I think the main things and as investors is that what we want to look at and how this is going to affect the companies that are yeah. being affected right now. So I think let's go cover some of the bigger companies, some of the bigger names. How all these regulations affect these companies, their business, how they do business, and whether there's a impact long term. So any any of I these companies you want to bring up? I think it started with Ang Group, right? So I think we all saw the impact Alibaba price had came down by twenty one percent, but it got worse today, right? And then subsequently you have TTT T- T- T price had dropped by fifty one percent at the time of this uh, recording, uh, and uh, the impact to them is mainly because their apps got suspended, so they can no longer sign sign up new users. Okay, so it's a pretty big impact. You don't know how long this ban is going to last, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, of course uh, move on, moving on to. Uh, uh, Tencent, I think their apps also, they decided to you know, self-rectify, okay, they call it. In a way, they, they volunteer to take the app down and then uh, fix all the regulatory, uh, so-called the security loopholes that they actually found out and they were going to list the app again in the early of August, okay. So all these, are, are the way I look at it, I think is pretty much have a minimal impact maybe uh, for Tencent and uh, Baba has actually kind of like over after the end group, okay. So yeah, the impact for Meituan, of course, uh, if you look at it, uh, the cost, like I said, it will probably going to go up for them because now they have to treat their all the freelancers as uh, full time employees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So for Alibaba, it's actually uh, they are not affected by it at all because uh, if you look at um, the recent news, right, Ch- China retail sales actually went up by eighteen um, uh, percent uh, to forty two trillion uh, yuan. Actually, yeah. this is so, after the end group. Crack down, right? Yeah, yeah. after the angle came out. So it went up, and of course, they are generally uh, recently they re- reported earnings. Their earning, in, earnings went up by 40%. And uh, their GMB, uh, basically, the total amount of sales that they made, right, in China went up from 6.6 trillion yuan to uh, 8.1 trillion yuan. So everything is going from their bottom line is growing by 23% year over year, excluding the fine. So, uh, so overall, it's actually doing well, especially their uh, cloud computing is growing by 60%, uh, 50%, actually, mm-hmm. more than 50%, because they started from a small base, and then uh, more, some more companies are actually go- are going towards the digitization phase, right? So, yeah, that's Alibaba. Yeah, so there was a news that Victor mentioned that, you know, they're going to crack down, continue to crack down this sector for the next uh, six months. So, let me maybe give you guys a context of what exactly happened in China. So, what happened in China is that they have... It tends to have their own ecosystem. Alibaba has their own ecosystem. And then, you know, uh, Biden has their own ecosystem and that. And the problem in China is uh, why there's an antitrust is because all these uh, big tech companies are, you know, must using their muscle power to flex, you know, to mm. tell other their users not to use other people's platform. How they do it is very simple. They block the sharing. Like, for example, if let's say I share, I found a deal on Taobao, for example, I want to share with my friend on WeChat. And on the moment I share it, the link will be blocked by Tencent because Tencent <laughs> Alibaba is competitor. Okay. 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 And the same thing for ByteDance, right? TikTok is very popular in China and they can't share with each other. So they are blocking each other. They are erecting a wall against each other. And it's not good for the market. Actually. It's not good for the consumers. Yeah. So consumers, the in terms of user experience, it drops. And in terms of merchant, let's say if you're Alibaba merchant, you cannot go to Pintoto or uh, JD.com. It's kind of sad, right? And you know, merchants are now, because they got so much sales coming from Taobao or Timo, now they can't put their list their, their products on competitors' products like JD.com or even Pintoto. Mm-hmm. So in a way, it's not healthy, right? The market, the, these users are trying to have exclusivity, mm-hmm. right? I mean, in the US, you don't really see that, you know, it's a free market, it's, everyone are free to compete, it's a fair competition. So what Chinese government is trying to do is basically to convert all these uh, tech giant and then, you know, make sure that everyone have a fair chance of yep. competition. Even if you're a young new company want to compete in the e-commerce market, you are free to do so. You can you know, go and attract new merchants if you can. Right, mm-hmm. but yep. basically, what the Chinese government is trying to do is that they want to crack down on all this uh, monopolistic behavior in China. I think the it's very clear that this is going to come down. But moving forward, I think we can expect that you no know, China is moving towards a better China, especially uh, mm-hmm. for consumers. Uh, you will see more innovation as you know all this exclusivity ends, and of course, uh, consumer at the end of the day will benefit in terms of pricing, in terms of experience. Mm-hmm. Right, so yep. you are leading towards a sustainable growth. Right, but among all these tech companies, they will have more competition, right? But these guys have big resources, right? They have yep. a lot of investment and all that. I think they already yeah. at the, they already built to the a size where they already dominant already, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, so there's definitely competition coming in, but then they are dominant 
in terms of the distribution channel, let's say for example Tencent, they, they already have the distribution channel to access to the user. Yeah. So if, if foreign player want to enter into uh, China, they yeah. they will probably want to work with Tencent, still want to work with Tencent, right? Instead of working with a smaller player, yeah. right? So so they, there's still advantage over there. It's just that I felt it's a temporary issue. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like they don't need all these things yeah. to actually still compete and dominate the yeah. market. They're already so big. You don't need all these anti uh, anti competitive behavior. behavior. Yeah. So yes. actually, what the Chinese government is doing is that they want the overall health of the market and yeah. uh, economy to do you yeah. to be more dynamic, mm. to be yeah. competitive, so that you know mm. companies mm. do better. Yeah. So yeah. that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And there are of course many other things they're doing, like you know cybersecurity, because they found that the mini mini uh, WeChat mini program. So they have got a lot of mini apps within the app itself <laughs> in China. <laughs> They call it super app. Okay, it's okay. a whole ecosystem, right? You yeah. can, you know, go and shop e-commerce on WeChat, yeah. and then make payment using WeChat Pay and stuff mm. like that. So it's seamless yeah. the whole experience. Okay, so yeah. they found that the sixty percent of the mini apps on the they actually randomly select, and then sixty percent of the app actually have a security loophole, right? I mean, uh, it's you know it's prone to hackers that you can actually utilize all this data and then they use for other purposes. Mm-hmm. So I think because of that, I think WeChat volunteers to take it down and then fix all these uh, issues. So it's a good thing. Right? Right? Because if they don't fix it in the future, you may see uh, another Cambridge Analytica happening in China, which by then is too late. It's mm-hmm. already happened, right? I mean, we saw that in I the mean, Facebook. I mean, there'll be a, like yeah. a national security risk as national well. National security, right? yeah. <laughs> in a way, I mean, yeah. all the data of Chinese citizens, yeah. Yeah, everything's yeah. all there. <laughs> which is what happened with TT, right? Yeah. They went to proceed with the IPO and yeah. they got so much data and you know, they even have the where you stay, what time you end your work. And yeah. they went to do their study on all those uh, government officials, what time they end work, start yeah. work. Yeah. You know, which one is the busiest among all. It's kind of like, you know, now, I think the government is going after them. Why okay, are you using yeah. all these things? All right, right, so let's bring it back together. So there's a lot of things that are happening. Government, Chinese government is doing a lot of things to kind of like, I think, move the, the economy and business practices into a more modern you know, age in a way. Yep. Yeah. So I think, but I mean, still, there's, it's kind of like everyone's fearful. It's like a yes. crisis. Yep. They yeah. think it's going to be six months of uh, crackdowns Down, and yeah. all that. Yeah, okay. People are scared. So you can see the prices have gone down 40%. That's a lot for yeah. any stock. Yep. And I, I mean, if someone who is not familiar with all this, they're going to be really, really scared of what's yep. happening. So, I mean, just want to sum up that all this is for the good of the, of the economy, economy. Yeah. 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 the Chinese economy. Do you think there's anything to be worried long term if the company fundamentals are good? Do you think I mean, if, you, if someone was asking you these questions, what would you uh, say? It, it depends on the companies, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. if, you are, if you invested in EduTech, you probably con case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, because yeah. I think China is very clear. They are telling all these companies don't use VIE structure, right? okay. which is yeah. a purpose, special purpose vehicle, right? That, which a lot of Chinese companies use it to list it outside of uh, China. Uh, and I think edited companies are probably much in the deep shit. Uh, but mm-hmm. if you invested, let's say, in companies like Tencent, Alibaba, mm-hmm. Alibaba has pretty much passed through the end group stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think those are, have a very small impact. There are, there are some bigger impact maybe on Meituan, and the cost will probably will go up. Uh, and you know, TT now is still a bit a big overhang over there because you don't know how long they're going to ban the app mm-hmm. and whether they will pull it out from the US IPO because TT is a national security. They have a lot of data that related to yep. national security, okay. right? So it's very sensitive. All right. So I think like Victor is saying, the Chinese government, the, 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 Ch- the parent doesn't want to kill the kid. Yep. They want the kid yeah. to grow up, yep. right? Yeah. So I think that's what, what's happening. Uh, but I think the, the companies that you pick if you're going to invest in China right now has to be really important because the, like you said, education is a yep. big, big question. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure Chinese stocks are on our radar right now. They definitely are. And uh, on, on a lot of many people's radars yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. so we're not going to cover so many, but I think let's just zoom in on one or two of the big names, uh, probably Tencent, Alibaba. These companies are on probably on your radar. How would you value them? Would you think they're a good opportunity for someone to look at right now? So, um, for me, I think the top two is basically Alibaba and Tencent, you know, because these are really integral in the Chinese, the, the lives of the Chinese, and they yep. have the most capital to keep growing, more pro- most promise, pro- promising to drive domestic consumption. So, I think one good example is since everybody's w- worried about regulatory risks, so I just got this article by Straits Times. It's like China is looking to drive up dom- domestic consumption. And it's important to know how the t- Chinese government is thinking. So they are saying that they're going to drive up uh, focusing on these two areas which which is e-commerce and automotive industry so in a sense Alibaba is actually primed to benefit from the driving co- uh, domestic consumption and then as you look at their revenue 80% uh, sorry 80, 85% of it 
87% uh, actually comes from their e-commerce platform. Mm -hmm. And then uh, only 8% uh, comes from cloud computing. So this 95% of their revenue. So, and cloud computing is up and coming, could potentially take up a, a larger part of their revenue. So if you look at this whole chunk, actually the rest, are, I, I don't really care about other segments of their business because they, they are just innovating or trying to add more features so that make their, to make the platform or ecosystem more and more attractive. But then this is the chunk of their revenue. And due to what has happened in the past, they are trying to be more competitive competitive right now so there are a few things that they're doing they are investing all their profits that they're making this year back into the business and one thing that you can uh, one thing that's coming out of it is that they're trying to open the global market so they're competing with amazon they're trying to do a delivery within 72 hours which is three days right so whatever what you order anywhere in the world they'll deliver it to you so that's actually very competitive and that's they have a huge advantage uh, going uh, into the future so that's alibaba so, alibaba is not uh, basically not affected by all these regulatory risks but at the same time i just want to say that if anyone is afraid about all these regulatory risks yep. they should limit their chinese exposure mm -hmm. to maybe like 10 percent or 20 percent of portfolio yeah. and not go too crazy about it because so, yeah. we don't know yep. what the next is move that CCP is going to make, right? Because yeah. it's very hard to predict. I think that's why investors are pretty much scared. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cathy would cash out everything mm -hmm. because uh, all this uncertainty. So mm -hmm. the regulatory overhang will stay for a while. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll cover on uh, Tencent. Okay. Uh, so Tencent is uh, basically a company that I think they are pretty much number one in China in terms of uh, number of users in the uh, China that they have on WeChat. I think they have close to about 1.2 billion together with the international WeChat app. Uh, so that is 1.2 billion, not mm -hmm. million. Eh? 1.2 yeah. billion. Yeah, it's a lot of people. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's basically more than twice of the, the US. The largest market. Population. Three times, I think. Yeah, yeah times. It's, it's crazy, right? Uh, and that will gives you, uh, and not only they have the user platform, they have a lot of other businesses within the WeChat itself, right? So I talk about e-commerce. So JD and uh, Pintoto is are the two e-commerce platform that people shop the stuff on the uh, WeChat itself. So it's pretty, very, very powerful powerful over there. Okay, so if you look at the revenue breakdown by uh, segment for Tencent, you can see that I think social network is uh, basically the, the, the WeChat that they have and then the subscription with uh, QQ. They also own the QQ over there. Uh, it contributes about 22% and then you have um, games that contribute about 32%, almost one third of the whole uh, business. And then of course you have online advertising uh, where you know people can put ads on the QQ and also WeChat social network. So it's, WeChat is like a Facebook a social media. At the same time, it's also a, a WhatsApp mm -hmm. two in one combined at the same time there are a lot of mini apps within the WeChat okay uh, so online ads got count about 60% and you know, fintech uh, which is they have uh, we banks uh, which do a lot of uh, so-called yeah fintech as, as per se right? it's the most like end group but they are licensed mm -hmm. right so they don't have they don't need to suffer what Angro has suffered because uh, they are properly licensed digital banking company in China uh, and on they and then the, they have cloud also uh, I think it's also lumped together under the business services, right? So they are the second largest cloud provider in China after Ali Cloud. Okay, and of course the rest contribute less than 1%. So if you look at the revenue breakdown, it's actually this company, within a company, there are many businesses. It's almost like a Baksha Hathaway or uh, China in the tech arena, right? So mm -hmm. it's well, very well diversified. What is the impact of regulations? Uh, I think very minimal. Uh, they have banned on the exclusive uh, agreement uh, for music streaming and all that. They are still the owner, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they still yeah. can earn income. They will be more competitive for sure. But yeah. for me, I subscribe to Spotify. I won't switch out. Even though there's Apple Pay, Apple Music, and then many other type of music uh, streaming provider. And they have yeah. the best catalog in the market. So even with competition, I don't see that uh, it's going to uh, affect them. And Tencent Music is probably a tiny part of their contribution, right? And of course, you have those edutech that got, they also have the investment in. Those are very small for their overall investment uh, portfolio. Okay, so I think Tencent investment portfolio, I think is about close to 2.5 trillion okay. mark to market mm -hmm. as of first quarter of 2020. And those are basically peanuts. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's pretty sizable. Okay, so I think Tencent is a business that will be very affected uh, insignificant, I think, by the regulatory okay. issue. Maybe they have lesser ads uh, from those edit tech companies. All right. Yep. So I yeah. think that's a pretty good, I mean, that's an overall, I mean, there's a rounddown of Alibaba and a rounddown of Tencent. Yeah. And you guys are saying that, I mean, we've gone through the business and everything, that these guys, even despite the crackdowns, six months after this whole thing blows over, they're going to still be around. Yep. They're still going to be the 800 pound gorillas. Yeah. Around. Five yeah. years, 10 years down the road, you're still going to need this guy. And Chinese yeah. government is also going to need this guy. All right. Yeah. So, really quickly, would you? 
I mean, no recommendation, but would you pick up Alibaba and Tencent at this point in time? Bought, bought. I bought. You bought. <laughs> yeah. your answer, yeah, yeah, you yeah. bought. So we are buyers, so you yeah. need to discount. Same yeah, same yeah, 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 yeah. So again, not a recommendation to buy or sell, but basically we have bought shares yeah. in Alibaba and Tencent. I mean, you couldn't be more attractive right now you're trading at COVID prices, COVID valuations, basically. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so, yeah so this is from very uh, serious uh, sell down that we are looking at. They are uh, at COVID valuation, but the business is stronger right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the valuation is actually a lot more attractive uh, and the, the market has expanded and you now COVID has accelerated digital adoption in China and the rest of the world as well. Okay, So this is structural, not temporarily. Right? So I think so, uh, the sky is bright for them, okay. right? yeah. even yeah. though with all these uh, short-term no, overhead. Those clouds are gathering. Yeah. But yes, clear. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think a lot of people are concerned about the VIE structure. Then say whether if you have a direct ownership to the businesses, if mm-hmm. yes. you invest in Hong Kong, the answer is no, because Hong Kong also is open to foreigners investing into uh, the business and of course the, the government Chinese government don't li- do not like any for foreign ownership uh, in their internet or telecommunication businesses and then at the same time um, I think you don't you don't have to worry too much about you know what's happening just limit your exposure to the uh, Chinese stock and um, uh, the Chinese government will not just pull the plug on most yeah. of the Chinese companies yeah. because yeah. it will make people lose it means faith. It's, it's the country, right? Yeah, yeah. the whole world going against it. <laughs> yeah. 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 They don't want to be that, right? Because yeah. I think they, they, they are one of the top superpower and they don't want yeah. the whole world to go against yeah. them. Right? Even they don't like TT, you know, security, which they can't just say, you know, TT, you close your business. A lot yeah. of millions of people are out of job, you know, the yeah. riders and all yeah. that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So I think it's a. So just to keep uh, that perspective in mind is that you know eventually, uh, when they want to raise money in the future, it's best to you know use the tap the global markets, the capital markets basically, rather than using my uh, taking money out of your own pockets. Although China has a lot of money, yeah. so yeah, you don't want to lose that confidence. So in a, in the same way, they will try to maintain that trust. So it will not just disappear overnight. You know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think we can wrap up right now. So I think uh, again, not a recommendation to buy or sell. Please do your own research, your due diligence on the Chinese market and the companies yeah. you're looking at, but we just think that it's a good opportunity to have a look at it right now because of what's happening. So I think yeah. there's, a, there's a saying, don't let a crisis go to waste. waste. Oh, yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah. I think there's something to look at right now in China, yeah. especially yeah. if you're interested in that market, please do your research. So I think that's a pretty good record. So Tencent, uh, Alibaba, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're dominant in the market. There are many more, so of course. And there are many more as yeah. well. <laughs> we can cover everything in this round table, but we just want to give you an update of what's happening in China, if you didn't already know. And the companies we're looking at, I mean, the obvious names, but we think that after this whole thing blows over, there's still going to be dominant, yeah. dominant yeah. players in the market. All right, so... Yeah. I really hope you like that round table and that give you some ideas about what you can do right now. Or if you're already invested, how you can feel about this thing, uh, if you're fearful and all that, I will give you a bit more insight into what's happening and that makes you feel a bit better as well. All right, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, some people have, yeah, yeah, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so don't worry too much. Uh, I mean, just follow the news and see what's happening. So once again, my name is Adam. This is Victor. Thank you. This is Kenny. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for joining us. You're the fifth person. If you like this content, please hit the like button and tell us that you like our discussion. Subscribe to our channel. Many more roundtables coming up as well. Any comments, questions, what's happening in China, put them in the comment box. We would love to have a conversation with you as well. So once again, thank you for being here and we'll see you around again.